and it's a beautiful, beautiful day. And once again, I'm wearing purple today. I've worn purple every day this week because I just think about Easter and purple and that cross draped in that purple. I, it just touches my heart. So today, that's what I'm doing. This has been my, this has been my purple week. And I have some Bible verses I want to remind you about. This is from a dear lady who watches us daily. And it says, um, Happy Resurrection Day in Christian Love, a Faithful Viewer. And she sent me a bunch of Bible verses that I want to share with y'all. And, and I'm going to start with some that I didn't do the other day. Jesus has risen from the dead, and that is Matthew 28, 1 through 6. And then Jesus is making intercessions for us, and we know that is true. Hebrews 7, 25. And then, the one that Brother Matt talked about yesterday, Jesus is coming soon. You know, we know that he's coming. So Jesus is coming again. 1 Thessalonians, um, uh, let's see, hmm. 42, 15 through 17, and then James 5, 7 through 8. And, um, and then, the most important thing of all, Jesus is preparing a place for us, and you better prepare yourself to be ready to go to that place. So think about it, and thank you to our sweet viewer who sent me this. She always sends me the sweetest messages, and I love that. So thank you so very, very much. And she gave us a list of Bible verses that this is Jesus suffered and died for us, and it refers to all the Bible verses that will remind you of that, because yeah, he did. And that's why this is this is the most sacred of all um, of all Christian holidays. So So think about that. Make plans to spend some time with your family. I'm going to give you a bunch of places to go because so many churches in our area are having events. <clears throat> cool Springs Baptist Church is having a huge, they're going to have hot dogs, hamburgers, and Big Easter Egg Hunt in Lee Newton Park in Jasper, so don't forget that. And um, it is going to be beginning around noonish. I'm not sure of the exact time, but Saturday. And you can actually go by the billboard. I think it was like 1 to 3 or 12 to 3. And then Ball Ground. Ball Ground's going to be eat up with Easter eggs. The Methodist Church is starting first. They're going to do theirs in the morning earlier. And then um, from Methodist Church, then Revive Church is going to have eggs in the park, in the city park, from 11 to 1. And then from 1 to 3, Calvin Farmer Park is going to have eggs everywhere from the First Baptist Church. So Ball Ground is going to be totally full of eggs. Jasper's going to have eggs. And I know the North Market's going to have a lot of places that'll have Easter egg hunts. So, um, you know, this is just a week. It's a family week. It's a time to get out and do something with your family. And you just, you know, you dress up. And that's why when I found this fashion show, I thought, you know, not everybody has the money to go out and buy Easter outfits for everybody. But you can go to your closet. You can add new jewelry. You can revise something. You can change a scarf. You can add something to go with it. And, and you can take an outfit you've had for a while. I'm ashamed to tell y'all how long I've had this outfit. Oh, Lordy me. Long, long time, but I never wear it with pearls. And I thought, I really like the look of pearls. So I went to the closet. I got an outfit that's about 12 years old, 14 years old. And I added pearls to it and pearl earrings. So it gave it a little bit different look. Usually I wear silver with it. But when Easter comes, don't stress out about, oh, what am I going to wear to church? What can I do? How can I dress the best? Go to your closet, pick out something you already have, and you'll see that in this fashion show today. Because Georgie took outfits and she would take several pieces and then blend it with something else and add it. We had some beautiful models that day and Angela happened to be one of them. And it was just a very, very, it was a fun day. It was a special day. And it was a kind of a treat yourself day because Georgie brought in all these cool clothes and everybody felt so good getting to wear them. And one of the young ladies who was on there is now probably in college. So when I was looking at this, I thought how amazing it is to have this footage and to have the stuff that we can share because these outfits that she brought that day many years ago, today you can go to your closet, you can change a few things, you can dress it up, you can change it up a little bit. Even if you change your purse and your shoes. If you go with a color rather than a cream or a brown, you can do something that doesn't cost you a fortune. And I think that's what today's lesson should be on this fashion deal. But I love Georgie's clothes. I love what she does. And she just, Angela always felt better when she spent time with Georgie. She just really treasured her friendship. So I want to share this with y'all today. Also, the Vidalia onion recipe. It really is good. Now, one of my friends said, I 
I don't know. I think I'm going to skip by Delia onions. I said, you can't skip that. This is a great compliment to a meal. If you do the Vidalia on onion shortcake, it goes great with soup beans and with fried okra, sliced tomatoes. It's just a great compliment to so many meals. So, so write down the recipe. I've actually posted it on Facebook, so you can see it there too. And when you make it, you just start with the onion and the sour cream and the corn and all the ingredients, and then you just dollop the um, breading on top so it kind of rises like shortcake. But it's so yummy, and it's just creamy, and it's really, really good. And it was submitted by my friend, Doreen Lee, um, from Jupiter, Florida, who has now gone on to be with the Lord. She was about 93 and taught me so much about living and loving and cooking and just enjoying every single day of your life. So... I bet you have somebody like that in your life too. I was thinking about that this morning and how many special, special women have taught me so much about living and taught me so much about how no matter what we have faced, we got to pick ourselves up, move on, and get it done. And I think that's what life should be about. Today we've got some birthdays as always, not quite as many as, as usual. Um, Becky Chumley, happy birthday to Tina Halsey, to Paula Culver, to Tammy Massey, and to Robin Brackett. So happy birthday to each and every one of you. I hope that you have a great day and I hope somebody does something special for you. Now this weekend, um, make plans to attend Saturday night. First Baptist Church Canton is having a fantastic night of music. They're going to have Glory Bound is going to open for Mark Lowry. And it is going to be a fun, fun night. It's $10 a ticket, $10 at the door. Just come and enjoy and have a blast because it will be so much fun. I hope that you will uh, make plans to attend, call a couple of friends and say, hey, we're going to have a night of laughter because there will be a lot of laughter there, a lot of good music, and the place will be crowded. So get there early. But again, the First Baptist Church, Saturday evening, and I believe it starts at 7, so I think you ought to get there about 6-ish. But anyway, this is on Saturday night, the 15th, and it's Glory Bound will be opening for Mark Lowry. Last year, the church was completely packed. So keep that in mind when you make plans, but do come out and enjoy that. And yeah, I'll be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's one of those things, there aren't a whole lot of things close by that we can do, but that one is First Baptist, and it's really easy to find. It's up at the top of the hill. If you go by Longhorn Steakhouse in um, Canton, go up to the top of the hill and you'll see the sign, so it's really easy to find. And don't forget the Easter egg hunts. A lot of kids are going to be getting a lot of eggs. And they're going to be chocolating up and they're going to be eating and they're going to be having fun. But we need to remind them what Easter is really about. So today we are going to share a message from Brother Matt. And we're going to share the Vidalia onion recipe. If you've ever been to Singing in the Mountains and you have seen Carol Blanton, he was there for many, many years. A really, really good guy. He is the lead for the Carolina Crossman, uh, a good group of men who travel and sing and, and sing really great songs. Today we're going to go into my kitchen and we're going to share the Vidalia onion shortcake recipe. It's really simple, it's really easy, and you probably have all the ingredients in your pantry except for the Vidalia onions and pick up the phone and call one of the lions and order them because the lions are selling them right Right now, I think they're 10 pound bags. And truly, don't, you know, buy two or three bags of them and chop them up because you only get Vidalia certain times of the year. Chop them up, saute them a little bit, put them in Ziploc bags and put them in your freezer. And then anytime you need onions for a meatloaf or for doing grilled steaks or doing any kind of gravies that you use onions in, there you've got them. So that's a great lesson to learn. And thanks, Nancy, for handing that. You know, I would never have thought of that. We're going to take a commercial break. And I'm going to leave you now here on ETC because the things that we're going to use today are already recorded. I've already given you Vidalia Onion Shortcake. It is on Facebook. The fashion show, I will put that on tonight because I do want y'all to see that and I want you to see the ideas that Georgie came up with because she took very simple outfits and added complimentary pieces that changed it up a little bit. And I think we can all do that. You know, you don't have a budget to spend a fortune on clothes, but you can add just a little scarf, just a little piece, just a little different jewelry and it just changes things and, and people think you have something new so so we need to do that and don't forget the last thing we're going to share today is brother Matt's message and this is the message I had already pulled ready to use and then he said I can come and be there and I said oh Hey, we'll have you twice this week. A lot of folks sent some precious messages and said, thank you for having Brother Matt here. 
it's not always in his schedule it's not easy to do but to make that work he and I spent the afternoon together yesterday and we had such a great time just sharing and talking and remembering we had many, many happy years here. And his travels and things that changed um, made it impossible to have him here all the time. But we're so blessed to have had him yesterday and a, a big thank you to him for coming over. It's, it's an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive, but he made the drive and I'm so glad that he did. So we're gonna take a commercial break. I'm gonna leave you on Facebook, hate to do that, but um, we'll be back and I hope you'll stay with us here on ETC. You have never been so happy Dancing, swinging, laughing at me Smile on my face It's happiness for days Uh-oh You are everything I need Happy ever after will be Couldn't even dream a better Couldn't even dream a better way Whether it's memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special, the Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Fountain Roofing has been providing excellent service for 35 years. Let Lonnie assist you in choosing the roof perfect for your home and your budget. Commercial or residential, he can handle it all. Fountain Roofing continues to provide quality workmanship and will provide references upon request. At Fountain Roofing, we've got you covered. Call Lonnie at 706-692-6997. That's 706-692-6997. Since 1962, Gilmer Towing has been serving the North Georgia area and would like to say thanks to all of our customers. For over 48 years, Gilmer Towing has carried on a family tradition with an experienced and friendly staff that offers 24-hour damage-free towing, unlocks, and four-wheel drive recovery. So when you're stuck in a ditch, tires flat, or car won't start, give us a call. Local or long hauls, big or small, Gilmer Towing will get them all. Give us a call today at 706-636-4TOW. In today's changing world, some things should never change. Time-honored, compassionate services are what families have come to know with Roper Funeral Home. Our professional and courteous staff offers traditional services, cremations, as well as advanced funeral planning, which relieves the burden from those we love. Hello, I'm Kevin Roper. If you have any questions about the services we provide, we invite you to give us a call, stop by, or better yet, ask a family who has used our services. We've had Alpha Insurance since our first daughter. And when we had quadruplets, <laughs> we really needed Alpha. Now we need our own insurance. With great rates, fast claim service, and a local agent we know. And we want to company our kids and grandkids can trust. <laughs> Call Alpha! For the best agents in the business, call Ed Stepp in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center in Canton specializes in low-level pain management. We provide a holistic approach to treatment, managing knee, back, and joint pain along with migraines, allergies, and medical weight loss through holistic and alternative approaches rather than pharmaceutical treatments. By offering multiple specialties under one roof, including chiropractic care and neuropathy injection treatment, we create the continuity of care that assures positive patient outcomes. So take the first step to a life free of pain. Give us a call or go online today to GeorgiaMTC.com. Harris Acres, and my guest, Carol Blanton. Hi. Now, Carol, you knew when you came to Georgia, you'd either have peaches or Vidalia onions. I hope for both. Well, I... we've had, we're going to have peaches and Vidalia onions, and wow. now the Vidalia onions, this is a recipe I've never tried, but it was submitted by a lady in Florida, mm -hmm. and it's a Vidalia onion shortcake. Wow. So you and I together are going to experiment. All right. Now, I glazed the onions. I just um, cooked them in a little bit of butter until they turned translucent. And to that, I'm going to add sour cream and cheese, and you're going to make me, I guess, the dough part of this. Okay. So you're going to use the Jiffy Corn Meal mix, yep. corn, Mayfield milk, and you know how I feel about Mayfield, Mayfield milk. Mayfield milk. Absolutely. And you said your daddy loved Mayfield milk? Mayfield ice cream. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we all love Mayfield ice cream. And yep. then you're going to add an egg to that. Okay. So this sounds 
it's simple enough and it's using the Vidalia onions. And man, is there anything any better than the Vidalia onion? Not that I found. Uh-uh, they can, are so good. You can peel them and eat them like an apple. Well, and that's the truth. You really can. Um, they don't, I peeled two today and I haven't shed a tear. I haven't shed a tear, so that was pretty awesome. Now we've got sour cream, onions, and cheese on my part. And you've got, and I used white corn because I love that white cream style corn. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now I don't love it when you have to work it up and fry it and do all that mess with it. And you said a splash? Yeah, of just a little dash of that. I think just a little kick. There you go. Right. Here's your spoon. There you Good. go. Now I've never tried this, but I like onions, I like cream cheese, I like corn, so, so I thought why not? All the ingredients are good, so That's right. all together should be better. We're going to try it and see what happens. And this lady has submitted, I think, four or five recipes, and we've done several of hers, and they're always good. Oh, so she, she, I trust her. Now I've got to add a little bit of fresh dill to my part of this recipe. And uh, you said... Your family used to grow dill? Oh, yeah. Isn't that something? Made our own dill pickles. We had to grow our own dill. You're kidding. Yeah. Let me tell you about making pickles. You can walk down the aisle at our local grocery store, <laughs> and for a dollar and 99 cents, you can save yourself a whole lot of work. Yeah, but you didn't have you got to keep the kids out of trouble, so you got well, to get them true. in the garden. That's the true. And You're right. Planting Boy, and Boy, my picking. husband would have agreed with that, so. It's funny, but yeah, we do a lot of things to keep those kids. We, we stay on the go-kart track because that keeps my son busy, busy, busy. Guarantee you. And he loves it. Now, He's that looks pretty good. good. Too, isn't he? And we have sprayed our pan with Pam. Now, if you will pour your part of that mixture in there. Just pour it all down. There you go. And then I'm going to put my part on top. And we're going to bake this for about 25 minutes. This smells good. Wow. I love cream corn. I love cornbread. So this ought to be interesting. Yeah. If nothing else, we're going to have something totally different and very interesting. And I like sour cream. S something different. This would be good with fried okra and sliced tomatoes. Be good with fried green tomatoes. Oh yeah. Have y'all had any okra yet? Yes. Have you? No, mm -hmm. I hadn't gotten any. I was going up to Darnell's next weekend and see if they had some. Will you put that on the top shelf of the oven? Mm hmm Looks good and looks simple. Now remember guys, these and all our recipes are available on our website, www.heartofthehomerecipes.com. And if you have recipes you want me to try, submit them. I'll try it and most of the time I'll like it. I don't think we've tried anything I didn't like. so. Now, Carol, we're going to let that cook just a little bit, and then we're going to have the most gorgeous cake for our closing segment today. Great. You're going to be so impressed with this cake. Good. It's white chocolate, and it's raspberry. Wow. And somebody worked themselves to death making it, but it wasn't me. I told you not to tell. It wasn't me. <laughs> but it's the kind of baking I love to do. It's the kind that impresses your mother-in-law. Okay. And, and my little mother -in -law. Okay, the finished product is on my Facebook page and you can see that. It is so yummy good. It's so creamy, it's so good. I love that. I love the way you can use Vidalia onions. And a lot of people don't like raw onions, but like them cooked. So that is just a great way to use them. And don't forget, you can purchase your onions from the Lions Club. All the Lions Club in North Georgia are selling them. The Gilmer Fan and Pickens Cherokee, they all have, uh, of them sell those Vidalia onions and that's a great way to start spring because there's nothing better. Y'all ever had a Vidalia onion sandwich? Oh, it is so yummy good. Yay, 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 yay. All right, we are going to go to next the fashion show. Now the fashion show um, was years ago and it was a day that Georgie came and brought clothes and we had um, several people here that tried on the clothes, wore the clothes, and, and she just gave them ideas on how to, how to change things up, switch things up, use this, use that, take this outfit and turn it into that outfit. We had a really lot of fun that day. 
I loved that it lifted my daughter's spirits and I could see that in her when she changed those clothes and put on those outfits she just really felt good and there's something about when I was doing some seminars with women I would take a rack of clothes and we did this thing called share and tell and I would take clothes pocketbook shoes and if you could tell me if there was something in your life that you really wanted a, a new outfit if you were going on a job interview if your kid was graduating from school and you needed something to wear to that if you just wanted to look great on Easter Sunday so I would always have and I would have a variety of clothes and sizes and I was fortunate enough that a lot of people helped me to get these clothes and then we would say now tell us what that outfit makes you feel like and what's the difference and when you step into something new or something different even if you shop at the thrift store when you step into something different and you can accessorize it a little bit or you can change it up a little bit you just feel better so I want you to take a look at the fashion show there'll be a break in this because the girls change clothes but I loved what Georgie could do with just a few pieces of clothing she could switch it up change it up and just create a whole new look and that's what it's about go to your closet and take out something that you're thinking I haven't worn that in 10 years well get it out and wear it today and just make it a little bit different so somebody says oh you have something new yeah I have something new it's 15 years old but it looks new because I added a little something and even it's, if it's as simple as the jewelry. And when you're talking about buying jewelry, you don't have to buy the real stuff. You know, I have real pearls, but today what I have on isn't real, but it looks great. And you can just, you know, you can accessorize without spending a fortune. I love to go to the Day Old Bread store up in Blue Ridge. The little guy who runs it is so precious. And every time I go in, he always is so complimentary. And he says, you accessorize so well. And I love that. I thought, how sweet is that? So that gave me an idea that each of you can go in and get a plain outfit. You can get a black outfit. You can get a simple brown. Angela loved browns. I'm not a brown girl. You can get something even gray and add some peaches or some turquoise, some teals to it. And you can dress it up. And you can just make it look fabulous. So we're going to take you now to a fashion show. This was done several years ago. We had a lot of fun. Charlene looks very different in this, very different. She was a blonde and she was um, very different looking, but uh, beautiful as always. She's always been gorgeous. And that day she had on a beautiful outfit that Georgie made. So I want you to sit back now and just think about what's in your closet and think about how simple it is to dress it up a little bit, to change it up a little bit. Even if you change a top and a jacket, it and you reverse and do something with some a different color and just give it a little wild look so it's possible anything's possible when you have an imagination and that's something that Georgie taught us we're gonna go to the fashion show now start by just looking at what I'm wearing for a second um, this is very typical of my look I've got a little chiffon black chiffon swing vest on that I like to drape over pieces just to kind of give them a little bit of a bumped up look and then I've got just re one of my regular shorter, shorter tops on over an A-line skirt. So these pieces can actually be layered for your colder weather pieces and uh, you just, as it gets warmer, you wear fewer pieces, you wear looser pieces. If you have a very tiny or small figure, you can still wear these pieces loose or you can wear them belted with sashes to create more structure. And there are probably about 60 pieces in the line and they come in different lengths, they come in a million different colors and a million different fabrics. And the way that I keep the line fresh and collectible is by changing the fabrics often. So I'll do a run of 50 to 100 yards of a fabric and then the fabrics change. So they change often. Um, I'd like to start off by uh, showing you just a small sampling of the collection. Marianne Bowman is going to be modeling one of the first outfits of the afternoon. And Marianne looks beautiful. Marianne always looks beautiful and I'm so grateful that she's taking some time because she's a busy mom. What Marianne is wearing today will start in the shop. I have three designers two jewelry designers and one textile designers and I love these other artists and I promote these other artists and we love having them in the shop because all of our work blends and is beautiful together. So Marianne, we're starting off with an antique Egyptian scarab and pharaoh set in aqua and black. 
The scarabs are hand carved soapstone and she has the matching earrings on. Now Marianne is wearing something very typical of the line. This is more of the chain link uh, fabric that we were talking about and these are two other colors that we were doing in the men. We're dressing Marianne in these colors because these are her colors. She looks beautiful in these rich muted colors. So what we started off with is a bias cut brown chain link jacket. We went ahead and let the bias just fall on the side. The points make you look taller, make you look thinner. She's got a loose top on, but because Marianne's got a beautiful figure, we went ahead and belted this to give it just a little bit more shape. She's got this over a pair of slim cut bias peg legged pants. And um, this outfit is just something as a busy mom that Marianne can throw on, throw on, run kids to school, then maybe go to a meeting or meet with people that she needs to meet with in the community. And uh, so turn around just a minute. We've got a scoopy neck on the back. And, and once again, these pieces are very sizey and roomy and they don't look like it because we've got it belted. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. Thank you, Marianne. And she's going to get changed and she'll have another outfit in a minute. Next, when I, when I started doing my, my uh, designs here in L.A. J., I was very, very inspired by the way that the, the Old Town Square felt, all the antique shops, and the old time feeling of the L.A. J. community, how much they loved antiques, how much they loved their heritage, and I just was inspired. My first love when I started designing was vintage clothing. I had a deep appreciation for the construction and for the beautiful fabrics that they used to do. My favorite periods were the early 30s and 40s because the fabrics were absolutely delicious and scrumptious. So I started collecting beautiful vintage pieces of trims, table runners, crochet tablecloths, draperies, and started breaking them down to do special one-of-a-kind pieces that absolutely cannot be duplicated because they are one-of-a-kind vintage pieces. So I'm going to start here. Angela looks beautiful and she looks gorgeous. And what she's wearing, this top piece, I was talking about other artists that show in the shop. Kathy Cole is a textile artist from Atlanta and is one of the supreme textile artists in the South. And I'm so lucky to be able to have and show her work at my shop. And T Kathy's work is silk chiffon, hand dyed, and hand wool felted on top. So Angela is wearing one of Kathy's beautiful silk wraps that can be worn around the hips, worn around the shoulders. We've got it tied so that it's basically just wrapped around her and it's just exquisite. It can even be folded up and just worn around the neck like a muffler. I'm going to take this off of her so we can see. Now the underneath pieces are the vintage fabrics that I was talking about. These actually were old vintage panels of draperies that I broke down and reconstructed into garments because they were so beautiful. The top piece that she's wearing is 100% cotton lace and it's a new fabric but it's a small top that I did to go with these other pieces. She's got a small sarong on the hip trimmed in a 1930s beautiful lace that I was able to find at an estate sale. And then she's got this over a little skirt, a straight skirt. One of the beautiful things about the way that this line comes together is that every one of these pieces could be broken down and worn with something else. So this little top she could take and wear with a pair of blue jeans if she wanted to. This skirt is just a plain lace skirt and can be worn underneath a three-quarter length dress or with any other top that looked pretty and soft with this. Turn around for a minute and we also have on her beautiful uh, vintage pearls because I also collect the vintage jewelry to go over these pieces because they're so pretty. So um, this is actually three pieces. We've also got underneath piece just uh, a, a small lace camisole done in the same bone and uh, these pieces would be great for an Easter look but they're great just to put on 
I encourage women to put their pretty things on. Look beautiful every day. Beautiful. So Do you great. love it? Yes, I love it. You love look it. gorgeous. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. So next, we have this beautiful teal outfit on Charlene. And this was so easy. None of these pieces had to be done. She was able to come into the shop. These were all on the rack. She put them on. We gravitated to what colors looked pretty on her. And what we've done is a long tunic top. It's probably about a 30 inch top. And then a narrow skirt. And then we threw a jacket over the top of it. And the jacket is fabulous, but if you get warm, you're welcome to take the jacket off. The outfit stands on its own. And once again, she could also take this top, wear it with a pair of black pants. The same with all of these pieces. All of these pieces, you could break down and wear them with a lot of other pieces. This morning, just for the sake of simplicity, we've done looks that are more monochromatic, but there's not one of these pieces that we're seeing today that could not be broken down and worn with a lot of other things. Now, this is one of the pieces of jewelry that is in the shop, uh, done by another designer by the name of Kate Finch Rumsey. And Kate comes in and she looks at what I'm running and then goes back and designs jewelry that would be pretty with the colors that I'm running for the season. And it is rutilated quartz and pearls with citrine and amethyst, accents and sterling silver, and it's a three-strand silver, citrine, and glass bead necklace. And it's stunning. One of the reasons we chose this citrine piece is because of her hair color. And so her hair color is picked back up into the outfit, and she looks beautiful. Can you turn around just a second and show the back? It's very easy, and once again, Straight skirt, bias cut top, points on the side, and it's really beautiful and flattering on her, and you look gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have Cheyenne. Here's our 15-year-old, and we love to dress Cheyenne because she's tiny and cute and, of course, gorgeous. And what we've done with Cheyenne is done some younger looking, fun pieces. We've started out with a legging, and this is this particular fabric is called Slinky and it's wonderful. I've run it for about five years. It's easy, it packs well, it's washable and dryable, and we absolutely love wearing it because it just feels light as a feather. Can be layered for winter, can be worn all year round. So what we're wearing is a plum trimmed in silver kind of glittery sequin pattern. And we've got her in leggings, which are a tight fitting legging. Then we've got her in a little tube skirt, which is just a three-quarter length narrow skirt over the legging. We've got a loose-fitting top that she could basically wear with anything broken down. And then we've got a little short, it's kind of a, an old dance capizio looking top that actually is just a loose little top that can be worn loose if she wanted to look a little bit more elegant, go to a party, have fun, or she can also take this if she's wanting the pieces to be just a little bit more form-fitting on her because she is very tiny. Can you turn around, please? Now, I'm going to do something that's a little bit different. I'm going to ask you to pull this skirt off. Take it off. Just put it down. She's got plenty of clothes underneath it. This tube skirt is a tube. My original company was called Units, and that was back in the 80s. When Units was done, we were all about, and one of the first companies to ever come out with a truly modular clothing line, and what that meant were the pieces could be moved around in a million different ways to create a million different looks. There were freestanding stores all over the United States, and Units was a big success. I sold units, came here, redid, redesigned the line and decided I wasn't about corporate as much as I was about working with women and helping them getting into looks. That's what's fun for me. So we're going to take this. This is basically the, cap, the skirt that she had on and if she wanted to, if it were colder, you could take any one of my pieces of clothing, when it, especially in these tube skirts, now this is the skirt she had on 
And if she were outside and felt cold, she could take this. She's beautiful. She could take this, put it right up over her head, keep her head and ears warm. And not only that, but look at what she looks like. This is a beautiful fashion forward look, but also completely utilitarian and it functions. It functions for cold weather. So this is her skirt now that we've got on her neck and pulled up over her head. And you look fabulous. You can go get into your next outfit. Now we have the queen. Okay guys, we had another change of clothes, but because of time, I want to get in Brother Matt's message. So we're gonna do that. And then on another day, maybe toward Mother's Day, we'll finish the fashion show and we'll get to show you the other outfits that they changed into. Everybody looked fabulous. It was just, it was a fun, fun day for all of us. So remember, if you're budgeting, if you're worried about what you're gonna have to spend for your kids for Easter and you still wanna have something pretty to go to church, just go to your closet and dress up something that you already have and just do a little change and, and you'll feel great. All right, the message from Brother Matt today is about um, joy will come in the morning, no matter what you're facing, no matter what's going on with you, and um, it will, it will. I don't care where you've been, I've been there, been there, done that. I was thinking about it last night, buried my mom, buried my husband, buried my child. Um, it, it just, life just kicks you down and you just got to get up and you got to know that there are better things coming. So we're going to, we're going to let you spend some time with Brother Matt and um, then we're going to get in our last commercial break and then it'll be done for the day. But I want to share this with you. I already had it planned. And then when he said, hey, I can come on Wednesday, I said, okay, I've already got something going with, with your other message, but I want you to hear this message too. There's something about living our life. Uh, we are not guaranteed those tomorrows. So make the very, very most of today. And no matter what you're facing today, know that there is a brighter day coming. So we're gonna, we're gonna take you to the message from Brother Matt, but I've got something I wanna share with y'all. Everybody knows I've been up, I've been down, I've had some good days, some bad days, but I have three sides. I found this on Facebook and I loved it. I have three sides. The quiet and sweet side, that's rare with me. The fun and crazy side, that's typical with me. And the side you never want to see. And a lot of folks have seen that side. When I was really down and out, when I was angry, when I was mad because my child was gone from here, and um, lately I've been really angry that she is gone from us. But there's nothing I can do to change that. It was his will. And during yesterday's talk with Brother Matt, we talked about what we have all come through. I have come through it, but every once in a while you sink back into that, oh my gosh, what if it had been different? What if this hadn't happened? What if that had happened? It happens. Life happens, and you have to accept life for exactly what it is. So right now, we're going to take you to Brother Matt to a really good message, and I hope you'll just sit back, reflect, and think about whatever you're facing today. Joy will come in the morning. It's going right. to get better. That's it's right. going to get better. Psalm chapter number 30, verse 1 through 5, is what we're going to be looking at in the Old Testament. Psalm chapter number 30, verse 1 through 5. The Bible says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast made my foes to rejoice, hath, hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast helped me, or healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord. Uh, o you saints of his, and give thanks at, at his remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night, for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, interesting, these several thoughts in these verses, as you even read through them, you can even think of some other things that you could study and, and bring out, but for sake of time and for the testimony that we have on the broadcast today that I think would be a blessing to each and every one of you, and I think seeing is believing, and I think seeing uh, the testimony, I'm amazed at how the Lord works things together in our life for a purpose. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and them that are called according to His purpose, and as I was praying about the message and seeking the Lord as to what what message to bring, he plainly put this passage of scripture on my mind, which tells me something that somebody out there needs to hear this, that somebody needs to hear this message of hope that it's going to get better. Things are going to get better. The last verse that we read says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. There's been times that there's been hard nights and there's been tough nights and sad nights and disasters and storms that we've been through, but the morning breaks through. No matter what happens in our life, 
uh, no matter what happens in our life, um, we can't stop the sun from coming up in the morning. In other words, there's not a trial that I've ever faced, there's not a heartache that I've ever been through that, that, I, that has stopped or hindered the next day from coming. This day may be a disaster. This day may be uh, troublesome to you. Maybe you've been through some night seasons in your life. But no matter what those night seasons have been, they have not been able to hinder the sun from coming in to our life the next day. Uh, we can't, in other words, we may have down times, but God's going to bring in the good times. And there's just a few simple thoughts that I think that we can look at, that we can apply to our life, that when you're going through a night season, to realize things are going to get better. Today, as uh, the opening, I even think about the opening, and I, as we looked at the, as Sherry mentioned about the pie and how we are giving, life is given to us ingredients. What we put into this thing that is our performance or our our um, our object that we're going to use this pie is it's really up to us we don't put the right ingredients together at the right time and in the right situation then it's not going to turn out right but if you do it just according to the plan which the Bible is our plan and we have to seek the Lord and find out what his desire is for our life then if we do it according to plan then it's going to be not only a blessing to us because we see the finished product but it's going to help others receive enjoyment too and uh, so in in this day determine that this day things are going to get better look for the good things that are going to happen in today and they are going to happen I mean there are going to be some great things that will happen we just have to open our eyes to the understanding that there are things God's providing for us but if we're not careful we won't see uh, the blessings because of the burdens that we may face everybody faces burdens I'm not saying things are just going to be a bed of roses today but I can say that he'll never leave you nor forsake you so as we study this we look back to verse number one it says I will extol thee I will lift thee I will praise thee I will um, magnify thy name and it says here I will extol thee O Lord for thou hast lifted me up thou hast encouraged me in the past thou hast brought me from a low point in a past now look in your life there this is not uh, Americans we, we're not always had it easy now I believe we're spoiled I, I really think that we're spoiled in America because of how good we've had it God has been so good to us and supplied for us in so many ways <clears throat> but um, but I do know that we've also been through some down times through the years uh, in my own life I've seen some low points I've seen where sometimes the food supply wasn't exactly what we wished it had been sometimes our money supply is not exactly what we had hoped for sometimes it's not just a it's just not a uh, an optimal experience for us. We, we could see so many other things that could happen, but if you look back in your life, you see that there have been low times, but God lifted you up out of those situations. I go back to the place when we first accepted Christ as Savior. He lifted us up, as the psalmist says, out of a horrible pit. So he started out our Christian walk by lifting us up out of a pit. And God is in the business of lifting us up. God is in the business of encouraging you and lifting you up. There are times that things happen. Circumstances and Satan and things in our life will bring us down. They will make us focus focus on the bad things, but God will lift us up each and every time. I can think of uh, just daily things that happen in our life. Maybe going down the road, turn on the radio, and a great song comes on and touches our heart. Well, God lifts us up at that point. Maybe we go through a week and the week has just been tough and the devil has just fought us and we find our way to the house of God on Sunday and we get in there and they start singing the hymns and we start singing and hearing testimony. We hear a Sunday school lesson or a message and it lifts our spirit up. God has lifted us up in the past. It's going to get better. And if you're in a low point, start looking for God to lift you up because God didn't, he didn't write these things in the Bible for us to have down times. He said, these things have I written unto you that your, your joy might be full, that your joy might remain. So God didn't intend for you to stay down. Uh, God intended for you to be lifted up. And this verse says, thou hast lifted me up. I cannot tell you the times that God has lifted me up. I can tell you this much, every time I've been down, the one that brought me up and lifted me up was the Lord. The Lord didn't put me down, but uh, the Lord brought me up every time. So look back in your life and think of all the down times. You didn't stay down. Well, what happened? The Lord lifted you up. It's going to get better. So just by, by that past testimony, you know and I know that it's not going to stay here. 
we, we, it's amazing to me in my life, I, this is kind of how I look at it, is there's been so many times in my life that I just feel like, well, man, this is it, you know, this is kind of down. I almost kind of use a, a humorous uh, illustration here. You remember, oh, uh, Fred Sanford would always say, this is the big one, this is the big one. Every time we face something, this is the big one. This is the one that's going to take us down. You and I know that that's kind of how it feels at times. That, boy, this, this is the biggest trial I'll ever face. This is the biggest pain and suffering I'll ever face. But somehow that mighty hand of God will get under you and undergird you, and all of a sudden you'll start to be lifted up once again. God did that. Thou lifted me up. Thou hast lifted me up. And whatever you're facing right now, he's going to do the same thing. And we know that by his past track record. As we look on verse number 2, it says, O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Whenever I see things like this, um, I think of Psalm 103 where it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy, holy name. Down in that chapter, it says, Who healeth my diseases, all my diseases. And, and it talks about those things. Well, what I'm trying to say here is let's, let's look at your life. Go back again into the records of your life. Pull out the file cabinet. Start looking at the problems. We know there's been downtimes, but every downtime represents a time that God lifted you up. Now let's go back. I'm 44 years old, and if I go back into my life and I think of times that I've been sick, I remember years and years and years ago I had to be in the hospital and have surgery but just for adenoids and stuff like that, but that's just a little thing. But let's think of every common cold that I've had. I wonder how many cold colds a person has in their lifetime. There ain't no telling how many times because it seems like mine always hits me right in the dead of summer. I don't know why it's the weirdest time, but when I get a cold in the summertime, it's just a terrible cold. Well, how many times have I had a cold? How many times have I maybe had a flu or strep throat or just some kind of sickness, an earache, whatever it may be? This Bible tells me right here that I called unto the Lord. How many times have I been sick? I remember one particular time I had strep throat, and honestly, I don't, I don't consider myself a baby. I know men, we sometimes are babies. Uh, when we get sick, it's, it's like the world is coming in on us, and we're gonna, this is going to take us down. We're going to die right here. And we might have just had a sniffle. I don't know. but Now, I don't consider myself that I, I, I try not to look at myself as that way. I hope I'm not that way. My wife and daughters are not here, so where they would tell you differently. But... Um, but I remember this one particular time I had strep throat, and it was it was terrible. I was I was fever. I had a terrible fever, and I laid there in bed, and I remember thinking this thought. And uh, this may you may think that I was just being a baby, but I really thought I was going to die. I thought this 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 is terrible. I mean, I'm I'm very sick. I couldn't. I didn't feel like I could hardly breathe. I had been sick, and I, along with the strep throat, and it was just terrible. And I thought, well, I'm going to die right here. Of course, at a time like that, you you always pray and you say, Lord, please touch me, heal me. Well, that's been 26 years ago, 25 years ago, and um and I look at that and I think, well, the Lord took care of me then. And I think of even the common cold. You know, I believe the common cold could even be deadly if it hadn't been for God taking care of us. What I'm trying to say is this God that lifts us up is also the God that heals us and has healed us in the past. Maybe you're facing a sickness today. Maybe I don't know what it may be. Maybe you've been told some bad news or maybe it's heart disease. Maybe it's whatever it may be. But I want you to understand that you serve a God that no matter what you're facing, He's bigger than that situation. And the same God that delivered you and lifted you up in the past and healed your sicknesses in the past is able to heal you in this sickness. Now we have to pray and say, God, what is your purpose for this in my life? Let me let it run its course as you, as you want it to, but help me to pray through it. Let me ask you to help me, but help me to be the witness I need to be in this. But what I'm trying to say, it's going to get better. Uh, it's going to get better in your situation. We know that because of God's past track record. And that verse that also said, I cried unto thee. Isn't it great to know that we have the privilege of prayer? We can talk to the Lord and share with Him our burdens and our heartaches. He lifts us up, but He also listens to us. And then He has delivered us in these situations and healed us. Verse 3, O Lord, Thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, and Thou hast kept me alive. Now, Again, I didn't know what, who we were going to be having on the program today, and the testimony of today I can't share with you as well as the, these folks can, and you'll see that here in just a little bit. But uh, God has kept some people alive. I believe He's kept every one of us alive. I, I'm so convinced of that that 
I think when we get to heaven and God somehow rolls back the time in our life and just kind of displays in our life the time that He's allowed us to be avoiding a situation. I, I use this illustration a lot, and I really believe this. Sometimes we might have got so frustrated because we were stopped by a traffic signal when we were running late. We thought, why did this have to happen at this time in my life? I, I, I even shared a comical situation years ago. I was getting ready on a Sunday morning. I had come in from the road singing. I run into the house to change, take a quick shower, and I was going to go up to the nursing home to preach a message at the nursing home, go over and teach Sunday school, preach that morning. I had also that day discipleship class that, that evening before the evening service and preach that night. So I had a very busy schedule, had just come off the road from singing three days. I was rushing, rushing, rushing. And as I was getting ready and I went to tie my shoes, my shoelace broke. And I thought, now, what is this all about? Why am I being delayed? Why is it, I'm going to have to unlace my shoe. I'm going to have to re relace this shoe and I'm going to take all this time and I have to find all this stuff. We don't know in a moment like that, that that moment might have avoided us a, a life-threatening accident. You say, well, you're so simple-minded that you believe that. Yeah, I do believe that. I believe God has allowed us to avoid situations. I believe just like this verse says, He kept me alive. There have been situations that I might have been in a tragic accident, but God spared me that. That's the God. See, that's the God that takes care of us. Oh, Lord, Thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. There's no telling how many times God has delivered you that we don't even know about. There's some times that we do know about, like the situation we'll hear about today. Um, we see these things, but there's times that we, we don't even know that the hand of God has just protected us in a particular situation. And that God that's protecting you is the same God that's going to let things get better in your life. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Then he goes in verse 4, break out into singing. It says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. So we need to remember these things that God has done for us and then let it cause us to sing and let us cause us to praise Him and give thanks. Verse number 5, For His anger endureth but for a moment. Aren't you glad that the length of, length of His anger is just a time? If God's anger wasn't subsided, we would all be in hell today. But God's anger didn't last but for a moment here, and in His favor, His, his favor is life. God highly favors you. I want to say this, and I'm trying to kind of make this a quick close because I, I'm excited about what we're about to see in the testimony and song we're about to enjoy, and I'm excited to be a part of this. But as we put this to a close, God God's anger is before a moment, but His favor is for life. Look what it says here, and it says, For His anger endureth but a moment, and His favor is life. No, Lord, God has highly favored you, but not just for a moment. He has favored you all life, all your life long. I know it says, in His favor is life, but in the reference and in the context as He's saying this, His anger is a moment, but what He's saying is His anger is in a moment, but His, his favor is for life. God favors you. Now, your situation may not be a favorable situation. Satan definitely doesn't favor you. He talks about in James that he walketh at a, about as a roaring lion, or First Peter, and seeking whom he may may devour. God, the devil does not favor you. Your situation may not be favorable, but you got a God in heaven that favors you, highly favors you, and he doesn't favor you just for the good times, but he favors me in my life, my whole life. He loves me in my situations no matter what. doesn't mean that he approves of every situation I've ever been involved in. It doesn't mean that he uh, is, is excited about everything that I'm doing, but he highly favors me in every situation. And it says here, finally, as we look at the final thought that we started off with, weeping may endure for the night season, but joy cometh in the morning. Yes, well, there is weeping. Yes, there are night times. But with every night time, just as we look back in verse number one, we saw the down times, He lifted us up. Every down time in our life represents a time that God lifted us up at the end of that down time. And just every night time represents another sunrise that's on the horizon. What a day that's going to be when you come through and see. The Bible says, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So what I'm trying to tell you is this right here. It's going to get better. I promise you, just as sure as the sun came up this morning, and the, today is a new day, and you can't stop tomorrow from happening. I don't care who it is in this world, how much money you have. I don't care how healthy you are, how sick you are. It doesn't make, I do care, but what I'm saying is, it doesn't matter what these situations may. You can't stop the sun from coming in the morning, which simply means, yes, you have sadness. I can't stop your sadness. But I can't stop the joy that will come in the morning. Weeping endures for the night season, but joy comes in the morning. And it is going to get better. Father, thank you for your grace and your goodness unto us. Thank you.
With speeds up to 150 meg, ETC and Ignite delivers more, more, more. More shopping, more music, more learning, more streaming. More speed to power smartphones, movies, and streaming video. More speed for more devices in your home. And more room in your budget with ETC's low pricing and bundled discounts. Get the fastest internet around with Ignite's new 150 meg. More speed, more savings. Call ETC today. Proverbs 426 states, ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Too often investors are looking for instant gratification or some secret formula for success. The prudent, however, have pondered the path of their money, invested with a vision, and based upon a plan that drives the selection of their investments. We believe the prudent approach is to have a strategy and patiently work towards your goals. Give us the opportunity to compete for your business, because at Kaiker Wealth Management, the wisdom is in the planning. I'm Lauren Smith, the University of Georgia. Today we have John Davis, former Georgia Tech All-American, Frank Ross, captain of the Bulldogs 1980 National Championship team in a Subway showdown. Subway. How many Subways does that Singleton own? He just up at number 17. He started in my hometown of LJ. Yeah, but he graduated from University of Georgia. Oh. Hey guys, who's hungry? It looks like Subway and Singleton Food Services Incorporated, the winner again. Subway. Chevy runs deep in Canton at Bill Holt Chevrolet. Deeper selection, deeper discounts, and we're letting everybody know it. Not just Chevy buyers in Atlanta. Chevy buyers in Blairsville, Blue Ridge, Jasper, and Ella J. If you're out there, we're right here with one huge selection at Truck HQ. Always get our lowest prices and friendliest service. Online, BillHoltGM.com. Because when you're talking trucks, you're talking Truck HQ. At Blue Ridge Dermatology, we believe your skin is vital to your health. That's why each of our providers gives personalized treatment recommendations. Let Dr. Mills do a thorough exam. He specializes in all skin conditions. Jamie Savageau is our nurse practitioner who specializes in skin disease. And our physician's assistant, Patrick Martin, is a certified injector for facial rejuvenation. Our certified laser technician, Donna Atosco, performs laser procedures with the latest gold standard equipment. Susan Newton is our medical esthetician. She specializes in chemical peels and skin tightening. Let one of the staff at Blue Ridge Dermatology help you look and feel your best. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Get peace of mind for your family with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to ETC Security and get six months monitoring free. Call ETC Security now or visit etcsecurity.com to learn more. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. As we approach Easter Sunday, I want to remind you to do something special for maybe somebody who lives alone to shut in. Um, you'll have your family, you'll have friends with you, you'll have a great holiday, a great time, and, and remind yourself what it's all about. Take time today to listen to the song, Because He Lives. Because He Lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He Lives, you know, we all can face those tomorrows, so think about it. This week, I started by talking about women who are behind bars in the state of Georgia, and I talked about where their lives could go. The Possibility. So say a prayer for those women because, you know, there for the grace of God go you and I. You never know what path your life is going to take. But if you see somebody that could use a little help from you, please offer that help. You know, there's so many of you out there who could make a difference in somebody's life, and I hope that you will do that. hope that you'll have a wonderful holiday with your family. Enjoy the time you have, and, and don't forget that old rugged cross. We'll see you again soon, only on ETC.